Where is the return on the investment for the patient's pocketbook resulting from the savings involved in healthcare uh, information systems and electronic health records? When can patients expect to, uh, to see some you know, tangible monetary benefit themselves? We've talked about benefits to the healthcare system, to providers and payers and so forth. What about the patient? I think that's a big key. I think if, our, if we don't get the consumers involved with the information, so I talked about before, that having the information of what that proposed or recommended treatment plan, the doctor says, here's what I want to do for you. How often, if, if ever, at this point, are they told what are these things are going to cost? And do they know when they're going to go get that x-ray that Ron's talking about for the back pain, how much does that cost? And how much does it cost not just to the hospital or to, the, to their insurance company, but to them? You know, getting to their benefit design with their deductible, their co-pays, and they get immediate payback. And we get more and more consumer-driven healthcare as this concept that you know people are being empowered, and you're given this high deductible, and you're going to manage those costs, and it's tax-free, and you can roll it over. Well, that's all great, but you don't have the information to actually make those choices. So until we get to the point where these records can give you the proposed treatment plan and the cost, I think the payoff can be immediate for people if we have that rolled out right. Just, just a counterpoint to the one that Will made. Um, well, I would, I would agree that to the degree our information systems can offer more uh, financial as well as clinical information, it should be part of the decisions, you know, that, and patients should, should be aware of the cost of care. The vast majority of our health care spend in this country is on chronically ill patients who go through their deductibles in two months, where they're no longer sensitive to the cost of those different decisions that they're making. And so I think there's some merit in that knowledge, but to bank too much on improved decision making based on some financial awareness of those costs, I think is, uh, it's, it's not necessarily great policy. I don't think, I think it will be helpful. I don't think it will take you as far as you need to go with it. Joe? We've been talking about a lot of different functions that may or may not be in an HM, in, in an EHR and we've talked about online communication with your doctor, and that's called a patient portal if it's part of the, the EHR and group health, and many of them have a patient portal. But if patients can actually get their questions answered uh, from the doctor, the nurse, or somebody online, if they can manage chronic illness, the number of visits that they require go way down. So that reduces time lost from work, you know, the, the gas and everything, and uh, the costs involved with a visit. Um, it also is shown that, that when, when people can go online with like a, a bronchitis, respiratory infection or something, you can, use the, you can use time a lot better. And the number of x-rays goes down, the number of lab tests go down, the number of prescriptions go down. You know, when patients go to all the time and trouble to show up finally at a visit, and you just pat them on the back right. and say, you're going to be fine in a couple days. You don't need anything. Right. You know, they walk away, why did, I, why did I go to all this trouble? And doctors have this sense that they have to give patients something so they didn't show that they, quotes, wasted their time. Now, patients really don't want, you know, unnecessary stuff, but the, the visit dependent system of care. To me, the real revolution is not just digitalizing the medical record. The real revolution is to create a new platform of communication and care that is revolutionary and that doctor visits become an option, a selective uh, choice, rather than the only way you can get care. And when we make that breakthrough, and, and right now the group health doctors, you know, they're spending you know, quite a bit of their time every day uh, doing their online inbox instead of just fa only face-to-face -face visits. And that, that creates an efficiency that gives them that return on investment. It also saves the patients a lot. Barry, we, we know, we know that electronic health records reduce the incidence of medical errors. We know that they uh, reduce duplication of tests. We know that they reduce delays in treatment. Those are pocketbook benefits to the patients. They're also, more importantly, healthcare benefits to those patients. So uh, I think I think there's there's really no doubt that it, this helps the beneficiaries and, and, and patients in many ways, including their pocketbooks. Well, I think one thing to add there too, in what Scott's talking about, is is key that today's world 
the, the benefit designs have made it so that the high cost people are, are not empowered, that they're, they're they, hey, I paid my $2,000 and now everything's free. So do we need to change benefit designs so that people are still vested and involved in the, managing the cost of their health care? And we're spending so much money. I mean, we're, you know, again, over 15% of our economy in other countries are 7 to 10% of the GDP on health care. There's a lot of reasons, and this isn't just a one thing is going to solve it, but, but benefit designs is another thing. So we can do things to get people more empowered at all, whatever levels to manage their costs.